Welcome to Planning Pod's Venue Management System. Today we're going to do a brief overview of where you can find all the tools you need to get started using our system to manage your bookings. Here is the home screen dashboard. You'll find key activities, overview items, waiting items, and upcoming items that are due for all of your events. You'll also find actions to quickly deal with each of these as they come up on your home screen dashboard. Let's go ahead and move on to our main navigation menu. Below your home screen, you have the events dashboard. We'll come back here later and talk about this in detail, but you'll notice that you have a brief overview of everything that's going on within your account at this moment. Next, you'll find your calendar. This is going to be essential as a venue to see what's going on and where it's happening. So you can filter by venue spaces, by events. You can view open leads, holds, archived events. And down here, you can even get into more detail with your individual events and spaces. One of the coolest things that you can do from here is use our import export to sync this calendar with your other e-calendars or embed the planning pod calendar on your web page or website. On the left, it's the availability cal calendar for those looking to book the venue. And on the right, you'll find the event calendar if you're looking to advertise event bookings um, or events that are coming up that people can register for. Scrolling down, you can set your business hours to also have those display along with the availability or events calendar above. Once you're satisfied with these settings, just click this button here to grab the embed code and provide it to your web developer or insert it into your web editing software. Heading back over to our main navigation menu, we'll check out the communications tool next. This is going to be your hub for all things email within your planning pod system. You can set up your own email address here within our system to send and receive messages through your business email without ever having to leave the platform. You can also create email templates for items that you use to send out to multiple events or multiple people on a regular basis. Use the quick views on the left to view starred messages, sent messages, and to see anything that's been sent out, whether it's from your personal email address or business email address, or if it was sent out via the communications tools within Planning Pod. Next, we're gonna go ahead to leads from the main navigation menu. This is going to be where you manage your sales process and booking process for your venue. You can either add a new lead directly from here if you have the information from a different source, or you can create a lead capture form to put on your website. This is a great way to collect information, have it come directly into Planning Pod, and not have to do a whole lot of extra data entry or extra steps to get there. You can apply new tags to the lead. You can choose to show your availability or event calendar, um, assign reminders, notify people of new leads, and even send an automated email reply so that your potential client knows that you're thinking of them. Automatically importing a sales management to-do list is a great way to keep on top of communication while you're working through the sales process with a potential client. We'll head to the top of the screen to get the website embed code and then just copy and paste it to provide to your developer or to enter into your web development software yourself. In your leads dashboard, you'll find a variety of tools to help you manage the sales process from initial contact all the way through booking an event. You can add contacts, vendors, and venues, communicate through the communications tab, build forms to gather information from potential clients, create proposals, set up to-do lists, and much more. The quick view for key activities, overdue items, items you're waiting on, and upcoming items are a great way to keep the sales process on track and you can quickly access them through this dashboard. You'll see something very similar when we get to the events dashboard. Using proposals, you can communicate services and pricing, as well as collect digital signatures on the packages offered from your venue. You can add a new proposal from scratch or import one using import export from a proposal template that you've created within your planning pod account. Simply click to open the proposal and you can add due dates, signers, clients, additional line items. You can customize line items for the specific situation and very quickly and easily get this information out to a potential client or a returning client. Avoid the extra time it takes to create an invoice and create one directly from your proposal. It'll pull all of your line items over into an invoice and from there you can customize it for the specific client. Your client's already assigned, but here you can set a due date you can add payment reminders, edit any of the line items that might need changes after that initial proposal, and send it off 
to receive payment via one of our approved credit card vendors. Clicking on contracts from the main navigation menu, it brings us to our contracts dashboard where you can open an existing contract, create a new contract, or import a new contract from a template. Use the quick views to navigate through your existing contracts, archived contracts, and to filter by signature status. This brings us to the reports area of your account. Clicking from the main navigation menu, you'll see that we have a variety of reports that can be downloaded as CSV files so that you can manipulate the information as you see fit. Perhaps the most valuable tool in the Planning Pod platform, the templates are located through the main menu. Here is where you can create templates for many different parts of our system, including contracts, proposals and invoices, floor plans, checklists, forms builders, itineraries, to-do lists, worksheets, and emails. Using these in all of these different tools will save you hours of time on a weekly and monthly basis. Create a template once and you can pull it into any number of tools to edit for a specific situation and use time and time again. Before we get into event specific tools, we're gonna to click on our name in the upper left corner and on settings and look at a couple important settings here. User access and permissions is where you'll manage who has access to your account and what tools they have access to. You'll also set up your credit card processing and several other important features here. I wanna focus on the venue manager. Here is where you can add spaces that you typically plan in, whether these are in your own location or if you're using an external location for any events that you're sponsoring or hosting. You'll notice that we can add different spaces and rooms along with the maximum capacity. You can also add specific floor plans so that when I import one of these spaces to an event or a lead, it will automatically add a standard floor plan and save me some time. To add an additional space or room, just click on this button here Enter in the space, the maximum capacity, associate a floor plan if you wish, and click Save. Now that we've gone through the main parts of the account, let's get more specific and get into the event tools. Clicking on events from the main menu, you can add or duplicate an event in the upper left-hand corner, or you can open an existing event. We're gonna go ahead and open the retirement party and look at the tools we have available to us. You'll notice the dashboard is very similar to the leads dashboard, showing activities, overdue, waiting, and upcoming items. On the right, we can assign contacts. If you need to add someone additional, click on the pencil icon and you can add existing contacts or add a new contact from this screen. You will also have the opportunity to add account access to someone who may need to access the planning pod account and assign their user group. Back on the event specific dashboard, we can also view vendors that are associated with this event and add them in the same way, and venues. This is of particular note. As we add a venue, you'll notice that we can select from the spaces that we have in our venue manager we just looked at. We can also choose the space or the room, and if there is an associated floor plan, we can select that floor plan. Once I click Save, it's important to note that you'll see this time conflict come up. This shows us that this space has been booked two times. In this case, it's conflicting with itself on this one individual event. But if it were happening on a different event, it would still notify us to prevent any double booking issues. For now, we're gonna go ahead and remove one of the venues because it's booked twice for the same event. Let's do a quick overview of the other tools available within an event dashboard. Communications will be specific to this event and not include communications that are related to other events. Appointments is where you can keep track of specific items that are going to be just for this event. These don't necessarily populate to the main calendar. The contracts are exactly what you'd expect, any contracts that are associated with this event. Under floor plans, you can come in and you'll see that we have our floor plan associated with the space that we booked from our venue manager. You can add additional items and uh, coordinate this for the specific event that you're working on. The forms builder allows you to create surveys and collect responses from your clients via email. Invoices is where you'll track all the financial information for this particular event. And that brings us to the itinerary. This is where you'll manage all of the details for the day of your event. Think of this as your timeline for everything that needs to happen. You can assign vendors and contacts, set up categories to easily filter the view. You can assign a venue, add files, and even set up a reminder to make sure everything goes off without a hitch. Quick pro tip with the itinerary, use the checkboxes to the left of each item to shift times forwards and backwards, assign vendors, update categories, or do a number of other bulk actions. 
Back on our event dashboard, you'll notice that you can access the proposals from here just like you can in Leads. But I want to talk a little bit about to-dos. This to-do list is going to be kind of a smart to-do list for you. You can set reminders, assign individuals, filter by the date it's due or if the upcoming. You can actually create multiple to-do lists within one particular event and filter by the person who is responsible for that to-do. Setting reminders and having these fire off for you is a great way to make sure that your event and everything stays on track. Below my list of favorite tools on the events dashboard, you'll notice I have additional tools, checklists, files, message board, notes, and worksheets. I can adjust what's on my favorite list by clicking on the drop down arrow to the right of each item, removing a tool from my favorites list, or doing the same at the bottom and adding a tool to my favorites list. This is a great way to keep a clean dashboard when you're working on your events. We've also provided some productivity features within the favorites grid. Quickly click on one of the little icons under activity overdue, waiting or upcoming to see what's going on in that particular category and use the drop down actions button in order to take action on that item. Ready to dig in with the tools that are most important to your business? Click on the reference guide from your main navigation menu and get started with detailed tutorials of everything that we talked about today. Update topics at the top to choose the items that you want to get started with first and use the live chat function in the lower corner of your screen if you have specific questions. Thanks so much for spending a little bit of time with us today and happy planning.